The air hung heavy, thick with something more than just the dampness of a London evening. A low hum of worry it seemed to seep from the very bricks of the council estate. Each window a different story. Mine tonight was etched with Barry's despair. I stood on his doorstep, the chipped paint a grim reminder of tougher times. Hard to believe it was just last week we were laughing, sharing stories over mugs of sugary tea. Now the weight of the world was carved onto his face, his eyes red-rimmed and lost. A wave of unease washed over me. Barry, despite his rough edges, was a good man, a grafter, always looked out for his neighbours. But even the strongest can crumble, and his son's arrest had sent a tremor through their world. I knew tonight wouldn't be easy. The weight of unspoken truths hung in the air, thick and suffocating. With a deep breath, I raised my hand and knocked, the sound sharp against the silence of the estate. Stacy, love, his voice was raspy, strained. He ushered me in, his shoulders slumped like he'd aged a decade in a week. The flat, usually bustling with life, felt eerily still. Family photos adorned the mantelpiece, a stark contrast to the grim reality that now shadowed their lives. It's Danny, isn't it? I asked softly, already knowing the answer. Barry ran a hand through his thinning hair, his face etched with a pain that spoke volumes. He nodded slowly, got himself mixed up with the wrong crowd. Thought he could make a quick quid, you know how it is. His words were laced with a father's anguish, the kind of pain that gnawed at your insides, leaving you hollowed out and raw. Danny, barely a man himself, was caught in a web spun from desperation and bad choices. He's a good lad, Stacy, Barry's voice cracked. Just made a mistake. But even as he spoke, a flicker of doubt crossed his eyes. We both knew this wasn't just a youthful indiscretion. This was different. This was serious. Danny's mistake was a heist gone wrong, a local off-license late at night. He'd sworn to his dad it was just keeping watch, but the CCTV footage told a different story. The fear in his eyes, the way he brandished the crowbar, it was all there in grainy detail. He panicked, Barry said, his voice barely a whisper, said he needed the money for us. The weight of his son's lie hung heavy in the air. Danny had been caught in a web of his own making, and now Barry was left to pick up the pieces. The irony wasn't lost on me. Barry, a man who'd always walked the straight and narrow, now facing the consequences of his son's misguided choices. The estate, for all its flaws, was a community. Word of Danny's arrest had spread like wildfire, whispers turning into accusations, fear morphing into anger. Barry, once a pillar of strength, was now ostracized, the whispers following him like a shadow. They look at me different now, he'd mumbled, his gaze fixed on his worn hands, like I'm to blame. And in a way, he was right. The sins of the son often cast a long shadow over the father. Section 4, The Raid's Ripple Effect. Two nights later, the estate was ablaze with blue flashing lights, Sirens wailed, their sound echoing off the concrete buildings, amplifying the tension that crackled in the air. A drugs raid, they said, targeting a flat on the top floor. The community watched, a mixture of fear and morbid fascination etched on their faces. Children peeked from behind curtains, their eyes wide with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. The raid was brutal, swift and very public. They dragged out two lads, faces contorted in a mixture of anger and defiance. One of them, I recognised as a friend of Danny's, the same crowd Barry had warned him about. The raid sent shockwaves through the estate. Suddenly, Danny's crime seemed insignificant compared to the hard drugs and violence that had been festering beneath the surface. See? Barry muttered, his voice laced with a strange mix of vindication and despair, told him those lads were bad news. Section 5. Ghosts of Barry's Past. 